Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now in the last video we were converting points between rectangular and polar coordinates and in this video we're going to see that we actually aren't limited to converting points. We can actually convert entire equations between these two systems of measurement. So let's say we want to convert y equals x squared, this rectangular equation, to polar form. Now the way that we do this is we're still going to use the same relationships that we set up in the last video. So for example, I know that y is equal to r sine theta and x is equal to r cosine theta. So I can simply substitute these into the equation I have and y equals x squared becomes r sine theta is equal to r cosine theta squared. Now before we move on, I, I just want to make something clear. When we're writing a polar form of an equation, our goal is we want to get to the point where we have r equals f of theta. This is analogous to when we're in rectangular coordinates, we usually have y equals f of x. The reason is, is that as we change x, it's very easy to graph this form in terms of y for any given x. And we want to have that same relationship. We'll see in the next section when we start graphing these polar equations, we want to be able to just look at all the values of theta and then change what our r is based on where we are in theta. Uh, it's very similar to the setup we want when we solve an equation in rectangular form. We find what y equals to, or when we simplify down into that, um, that graphing format. So now continuing on, this is our goal in mind now. We want r on the left side, and on the right hand side we want some function of theta. In other words, I don't want any r's on my right hand side. So let's go ahead and distribute that power through on the right side. We have r sine theta is equal to r squared cosine squared theta. Now let's divide both sides by r and divide both sides by cosine so we can separate these variables. I'm going to get that sine of theta over cosine squared theta on the left is equal to r. On the right hand side I just had an r squared left and I divided it by r so I just get r and now let's get it in the right form. Let's put that r on the left hand side and on the right hand side now I can simplify this. I have sine over cosine which is tangent theta and then I have an additional cosine in my denominator and I know 1 over cosine is secant theta. So this is as simple as we're going to be able to get this, isn't it? So this is our polar form of the equation y equals x squared. Now in general, going from rectangular to polar is very straightforward. We're always going to have a mix of x's and y's, and the key is we just, everywhere we have a y, we put r sine theta, and everywhere we have an x, we put r cosine theta. Now I'm going to do several examples of the other direction. The reason is the other direction can be a little bit more tricky, so let's say we want to convert the equation r cosine theta equals 6 to rectangular form. Now remember we just saw in the last video, and let's just write them up here as a reminder, we know that x is equal to r cosine theta, we know that y is equal to r sine theta, and the last one that's going to help us is we know that r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. So generally what we're going to want to do is every time we have a cosine and sine, we want to make sure that we attach an r to that so that we can plug in y or x for that r cosine and r sine. And whenever we have just an r floating out somewhere where it's not attached to any trig function, we can use this substitution that r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So in this case, it's actually quite simple. We're almost done already. I have the r cosine theta. I know that that's equal to x. So my left side is just x and my right side is 6. And we're done. This is the equation in rectangular form. Now this is an example of where we have something that looks a little bit complicated when it's in polar form, but in rectangular form it simplifies out to something very easy to handle. Right? This is just our vertical line at x equals 6. But let's take a look at some others. Let's say we have this formula, or this equation, r equals 4 sine theta, and we want to convert this to rectangular form. So notice I have a sine theta on the right, and the only substitution I can make for sine is when it's r sine, right? I have no substitution that helps me just dealing with sine alone. So the first thing I need to do here is multiply both sides of the equation by r. On the left hand side, I get r squared, and on the right hand side, now I'm going to have 4 times r times sine theta. 
Now we're ready to go ahead and make some of our substitutions. I know r squared is x squared plus y squared. And I have 4, and I know that r sine theta, well that's just y, isn't it? Now a lot of problems will ask you to convert and then maybe describe what the curve is once you get it into rectangular coordinates. So let's try to figure out what this curve is. We're not quite in a form where it's easy to figure out, but let's go ahead and pull this 4y to the left hand side. I have x squared plus y squared minus 4y, I'm going to leave a little space here, equals 0. Now I want to complete the square. If you remember equations of circles, I want to be able to complete the square here. And remember to complete the square, I take whatever the coefficient is of y here, I'm going to divide it by 2 and then square it. So that means that I'm going to be adding 4. Right? If I divide negative 4 by 2, I get negative 2. And then if I square negative 2, I get 4. So I need to add 4 to complete the square on this left side. Now because I added 4 on the left side, in order to keep this equal sign valid, I also need to add 4 on the right hand side. So this is going to give me, I still have this x squared floating around. Factoring this now, y squared minus 4y plus 4 is just y minus 2 squared equals, and over here I'm left with just 4. And now we can see this is the equation of a circle. It's a circle at 0, 2 with a radius 2. Okay, so we can complete that square and see what's going on here. But notice here, this equation here, while it's not particularly complicated, r equals 4 sine theta is a bit simpler, isn't it? Uh, just a bit simpler. Let's take a look at another example like this. Convert r equals 1 plus cosine theta to rectangular form. So I'm going to, here I notice I have this cosine floating around all alone, so I'm going to need to multiply both sides by r again. I get that r squared on the left is equal to, now I'm multiplying the right side by r2, so this 1 becomes an r, and I have plus r cosine theta. Now I'm in a position where I can go ahead and plug in for everything. This r squared is x squared plus y squared. This r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. plus, and this r cosine theta is x. Now we could simplify this a little bit, and by simplify I mean we can get rid of the square root, um, but we can't do much more than that here. I'll go ahead and pull this x onto the left hand side. I have x squared plus y squared minus x is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And now squaring both sides, I'm going to get that x squared plus y squared minus x the entire quantity squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. That's super gross, isn't it? We have this very complicated equation now. I'm going to have power 4s of x. I'm going to have x squared y squared terms. Um, I'm going to have a lot of stuff going on. And notice that the equation this came from was actually quite simple. Now this is the reason that we use polar coordinates. In some cases, polar coordinates really simplifies things down. 1 plus cosine is a much simpler equation to deal with than x squared plus y squared minus x whole quantity squared equals x squared plus y squared. Now in the next section we're going to start graphing some of these polar coordinates, these port, um, <clears throat> polar equations, and they're going to look something like this, like I have up the top. We want a, just an r on the left side, on the right we'll have some expression of theta. And we get some pretty cool graphs when we're working with these polar coordinates. So we'll see you in the next section.